My mission is to help you understand that death is the end of a life, but not of a relationship, and to bring comfort and peace back into your life, but also to be the voice of communication for those who have crossed over and to reconnect the bond that is forever. I have been working as a medium over 20 years, and in that 20 years, what I have found is your loved ones who've crossed over want to communicate with you just as much as you want to communicate with them. And through this, if you really look for the signs, take a little time to listen for communication, whether it's through meditation or synchronicity, you'll be able to communicate with your loved ones just as I do. And it's our right to know that death does not part us. Yes, they're in another dimension, and we do miss them and grieve them, but we still can communicate with them, and they are trying to communicate with us also. I was really young, because most young people do get messages from the other side. A lot of times they'll say, oh, they have a um, invisible friend, and uh, it, it's their imagination. But the intuitive side of the brain is the imagination. They're both the same. So when I was a child and I would see spirits, I would go talk to my mother about it, and she, would, she understood and would see spirits also. So she'd ask me who it was. And I would try to describe, and then I would, uh, she would get out an old family album, and we'd look through it, and I'd say, that's him. It was the man with the hat. And she'd say, oh, that's your old grandfather. And she'd tell me all about him. So it was encouraged for me to see the spirits. And we were very religious, so she'd always get the holy water to make sure it was a, a good spirit coming through. And it was always done very positive-like. I came from a very strict Catholic home. I went to Novenas, First Fridays, every holy day of obligation that there was. I believe in Jesus, and before I do my work, I surround myself with light, and I ask Jesus for protection so that I'm only able to see spirits of the Most High, and I do it through the love of Christ. And, and I believe that by doing that, it's not something that's wrong. Maybe from the church's point of view, but I don't think from God's point of view that it's a wrong thing to do. But I don't try to change people's beliefs. I just know for me, I try to do my work from God. Some people really like or need, especially if they're grieving, to be near me and with me. but. Believe it or not, it's easier over the phone because I don't see your face. And the person is comfortable in their ha home, and I'm comfortable in my home. And when we do it, the spirit, there's no time, there's no space in the spirit world. So once I bridge into you, whether it's over the phone or if it's in person, the reading's exactly the same. How do I bridge? Yeah, I pray. I take a few minutes, I pray, I open up. I don't see spirits all the time. It's not like I'm walking in a supermarket and I go up to somebody and I say, oh, blah, 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 this, this spirit's with you. I don't do that. When I work, I open up. And when I bridge, I, I cannot get your loved one without you. I bridge to you, I open up, and that's my way of opening up and letting the spirit come in because I have your permission. If I don't have someone's permission, then I don't do it. It's usually something very positive. Once we've crossed over, if we're not in a place of being real positive, like if we were someone that was very negative before, you probably won't hear from them because they're in a place of healing, understanding, unconditional love. When your loved one is ready to communicate with you, then it's usually something positive. And as humans, we don't always say something positive to ourselves. We'll look towards something and we'll beat, it, beat ourselves up about it, but when our loved ones come to us, they're always giving us encouragement and love. So it's a little different when they come than if it's your own mind. 